right. All right, all right, all right, all right. All right. All right. What's up, y'all? It's your girl, Kim Ray, and you're watching Kim Ray Music TV, and I'm back with your Insecure Review for the week. This is season number four, episode number nine. The second to last, is it anti-penultimate episode before the season finale? So if you're new here, make sure you subscribe down below to my channel, like this video, share the video, follow me on Instagram and Twitter at Kim Ray Music TV, and comment down below what you thought about this mess that ensued all right so before we completely drag molly um i just want to give a shout out to yvonne orgy who is not molly okay molly's a character yes she plays her but she is not her personally right um so i want to give a shout out to her for her hbo special last night mama i made it i was watching i was tuned in mama looked good mama um showed off her family where she came from her culture we got to know her a whole lot more you know she kept us laughing so it was just a good time so shout out to you yvonne for your special such a great time i hope to see more specials coming from you and see you in more things and not making me upset with this molly character all right Okay, so we opened up the episode with Issa and Lawrence. So I know last week we were thinking like, okay, was this just closure? This walk, was she? does this mean that she's done? Well, we see that it means that they giving it another go, okay? They are hanging out, they are, and it's all on this couch, right? So it's like symbolism of this couch they purchased together, this couch is back, and they're giving it a go, right? Um, they're messing around, they doing the do, they working, they laughing, they eating, and all this stuff. So, anytime this goes down, you know the question is going to come up. What are we doing? What is this? We got to put something on it because I got to know what you're doing on your side, what I'm doing. You know, you need to know what I'm doing on my side. There needs to be an open communication, especially since when we tried it before and when stuff fell apart, we weren't communicating, right? So we get down to the nitty gritty of the conversation and um, Issa tells um, Lawrence about Nathan, okay? And so I'm like, okay, Issa, you doing good. You being open and honest, letting him know Nathan is this dude you used to date. Back in the day, he's asked you to come help him move. Um, are you cool with that? Now for me, Nathan is more than somebody you just used to date, okay? Y'all have something, something brewing that has not, <coughs> Jesus, that has not, um, it hasn't like fully gotten going yet because of extenuating cir circumstances like all these other things have going been going on and it seems like y'all are making it back to each other so to say that y'all used to date that's not completely true so I was like mm, yeah no if you are trying to make something work which you're you know five year five Year, five plus year relationship boyfriend pretty much almost fiance type of dude everybody need to be cut off okay everybody need to be cut off especially because you cheated on him in the beginning it was with a guy that was a friend and yeah he was doing you a favor at first and he stepped right on in and nathan is that for you because nathan already is the person who got you to believe in yourself enough to do this event. So he already holds like a little special place because you wasn't fully believing in yourself. Y'all ran around LA that day. He told you to just do it and you did it and now look where you're at, right? Oh my gosh, what is on my face? So when he says that he's cool with it i'm like okay fine you're gonna go help this dude move but you need to let him know right then and there because as soon as you look in nathan's eyes it could be done okay you you, you done messed around and now you didn't messed up the trust twice with lawrence okay so that's hanging up in the air she's trying to figure out what she gonna do and how she gonna get through it you see that molly is back with her therapist dr Rhonda. And while I was happy that Molly was there, this was a good scene because it shows you how 
some of us when we go to get advice or when we go to the therapist or when we go you know to an elder or a friend you know you go seeking advice and you talk everything out but you don't take none of the advice so you came here to ask me about you know this stress and this I can't think of the word it's on the tip of my tongue um, you know this stress that you're dealing with and you don't really wanna you don't really wanna do the work like that okay so Dr. Rhonda is asking her basically you know why do you have to be would you rather be right or would you rather have the relationship and you know I really honestly feel like Molly just is something in her that is like she has to be right because in every relationship every issue that we've seen you don't see her like walking it back to really figure out like her part in it her taking it and understanding why somebody is coming at her the way that she is I mean the only time she did it was with Andrew when she was working a lot okay so the Dr. Rhonda asked her you know was there anything from the block party that you could have done differently was there anything and can you believe Molly said no I'm like regardless of the fact that you know you and Issa was supposed to have this talk on Thanksgiving she skipped out on the talk regardless of the fact that she went behind your back in a roundabout way to talk to Andrew regardless of the fact that y'all been had this this talk that y'all are supposed to have and it's just been building and building and building fine but to show out at her event you didn't think that that was wrong like I just I cannot get down with people who just don't see no way no how what they did like you have to you have to be able to say and acknowledge like I cut up at the event yes I could start there and be like listen I apologize for cutting up at your event there was a time and a place for that talk and how I felt you know because of our relationship because of our past I owed you and just cuz of me Molly the baddest B okay and her outfits were on point okay her outfits were on point this episode but just for me and how I carry myself I just I behaved in a manner that I don't fully vibe with and I should have give, given you something better we should have had a talk here at POTS the next day or whatever but she didn't even see fit to say or do that so I'm just like you do, are you seriously justifying that behavior or are you just excusing it because you felt like Issa was I can't get down with people like that I can't get down so I'm just like Molly you really is not you already not making it good you already making it hard I'm sorry to like really understand where you coming from yes I understand that you know she's she's on this slow pole to like changing but she's only changing for Andrew she I mean she has so much pressure and so much um writing or so much I mean what, what am I trying to say there's so much that comes with Issa okay she's not giving Issa all the chances and this blank slate and this freeness for Andrew it's just like you know Issa has already run her course with me so I'm gonna give her the bare minimum right so y'all my throat so I'm like listening to her with this therapist and I'm like why are you even paying for a session if you're not gonna do what she's saying do you paying this woman to give opinion of everything going on with your life. She has circled everything back and found the similarities in between certain situations and the common denominator and everything that you do to further this agenda in these relationships and you still don't want to see it. You still don't want to do it. You still don't want to make things right on your end. Okay, so meanwhile, Issa is having an issue because she is trying to figure out what she should do about Nathan, if she should stay being a friend, um, but she wants to be true to Lauren, she wants to be honest, so she calling Kelly, she calling her brother, but we all know she wants to talk to her best friend. Now, she knows that she can't talk to her best friend until she has this talk, all right? So I don't know about y'all, but what did this reveal to y'all? Did this reveal to you that Issa needs Molly more than Molly needs Issa did it reveal to you that 
like Issa just misses her friend and you know she's she's very forgiving because I'm like this girl showed out at your event and you was still the first one to call her so I don't want to be naive and say like oh Issa's just so forgiving obviously she was it was another instance where she felt like you know I'm trying to use Molly because basically I need someone to talk to about all this stuff so I guess I'm kind of answering my own question but I'm just like clearly she wasn't tripping too hard over what happened at the event enough to call Molly but she also didn't call her to talk about it so when this happened when she called her and she answered and she cussed her out I was like is this real I'm gonna need y'all to make a distinction with the dream sequences make it like less color make it black and white put a cloud around it or something because I'd be like uh was that real all right so y'all know she she called her for real she left a message they end up going out to eat okay um when they get to this restaurant you know Issa's acting all nervous anxious and stuff um the conversation is weird because they are talking they're talking small talk first and I've had this these instances where you meet up with a um a close friend right because you guys have had this disagreement and basically this meetup is like it's a lot riding on it. it's a lot of pressure it's um you know because you want everything to be back cool but you also like we not about to just move from here the same way we was moving before because clearly there was something wrong and we got to hash this out before we can move forward okay so because they close friends you know they talking about different things Issa is bringing up all the stuff that Molly has missed. Molly is a little reserved. You can tell neither one wants to apologize. Neither one wants to bring up, bring up the issue at hand. So no one does. So that made me upset because I'm like, bro, y'all, y'all need to talk. And this is annoying seeing every scene and we know something needs to be said but nobody is saying it and it probably is because nobody wants to hurt the other's feelings they know the relationship has run its course a lot of us have been in the situation where some friends they just don't they don't cross over with you to the new you they just don't and you know you try to hold on you try to hold on you try to hold on and it just don't be happening because you're clearly in two different spaces but i don't feel that way with molly i don't feel like she's in a whole different space I feel like she's in a relationship and Molly cannot be in a relationship and have her friend and that to me is a problem people like that is a problem like you can be in a prosperous relationship and still hold down your friendship but it's kind of like she don't want to put the two together and it's almost like because Issa knows the real her and how she's been before and she don't want Andrew to see that side. But Andrew's starting to see that side. So Issa don't have to do nothing. So all this blaming of Issa, I'm just like, bro, like, are you for real? When she gets to the house and she's explaining to Andrew, you know, how it went. First of all, I think it's very weird that Andrew just rushes off the phone whenever Molly comes in the room. If y'all don't notice that, that, that happens every time. He rushes off the phone. Okay, so Andrew's brother is in town. Um, she, he brings up, you know, there's tickets to this game. He got them tickets to this game, invited them both. Molly is talking about how she don't want to go. You should just make it a boys night type thing. I'm like... So, if you serious about Andrew, are you just gonna feud with his brother forever? Like, if y'all get married, you just gonna feud with his, I'm like, how does Molly not see that, like you, you, you cannot just, you cannot just cover everything up. You have to have the conversations. You have to go apologize and admit your wrongs. Look, I was out of line because remember she just, we didn't see it, but we're under the assumption that they just left um, Mexico and went back to their life. So did you ever have a conversation with Victor to let him know like, hey, listen, things got out of hand. I shouldn't have said what I said to you, but I do honestly feel strongly about race and you know being a black woman this is my experience maybe that wasn't the right place to discuss it but because i'm into your brother i am interested in salvaging this relationship like none of that that's what we doing 
I was like, oh, Molly, this is not a pretty color on you. Okay, so you can tell that Andrew's a little bothered because he brings it up later on. And even like with the food thing, she just changed the order up. I'm like, Molly, you gonna mess around and not have nobody. You're not gonna have Andrew. You're not gonna have Issa. Okay, and with one episode left, I don't know how I'm predicting all of that, but it definitely looks like it's gonna go fast next week. Okay, so aside from that, uh, Issa goes over to Nathan. She's trying to prepare herself for this conversation. And y'all know for me, when you go into this dude's house who looks the way he do, who y'all just got, start getting back cool after, you know, he's had this awakening, you've had this awakening, everybody's coming into their own, all this growth is going on, you big up in him, and this is his new place. Girl could have went one of two ways, okay? So you was strong. You was strong. All right, so, um, you know, she's avoiding him being weird. You know, I'm yelling at the TV. Girl, just tell him, girl, just tell him. So she ends up telling him, you know, her and Lawrence are giving it a go, going back, getting back together. And, you know, Nathan turns into the petty king real quick. Like, oh, the one you cheated on? He's laughing about it. And I'm like, I mean, but for real, like, you cheated on him. And you, you had to be comfortable with all that because people going to try you. And so I like Issa for that she was able to move and navigate herself within the awkwardness, within the, you know, pettiness. Okay, so this is where we find out that Nathan was bipolar and that's why he ghosted. He's trying to figure out what's going on with him, went to the doctor, found out it was a huge relief. And instead of Issa, you know, judging him, which a lot of people would have done in our community. Instead of her judging him, she's like, oh my gosh, thank you for sharing that. I'm so sorry I wasn't able to point it out. But if you think about it, she didn't even really, really know him that well enough to be pointing it out. But it's just like, you can see with Nathan, like he's super thankful for Issa, you know, and her friendship and being there and stuff. Even if she initially used him, she was able to like get back cool with him and, you know, still be there, still be that one for him. And so... I wonder if that's changing y'all outlook on Nathan now because are y'all feeling like he was justified in just ghosting? Do you think that he should have been like, listen, something is going on with me. I really can't figure it out. I'm going to, you know, fall off the grid for a couple weeks while I go figure it out. But if it's like bipolarism, is that the correct word? If you're, If it's like bipolar, like how much... If you don't really know what's going on with you, it's hard to just be like, listen, I need to take a breath because I don't really know what's going on with me. Uh, it's not hard for me, but I guess I could give the benefit of the doubt. Okay, so I'm just like, they decide that they're just going to be friends and he's just so super thankful for her in his life. And I'm like, this ain't going to work. Y'all can't be friends because in his eyes in his face he's thankful but yeah he, he real real thankful okay so just the wrong time the wrong moment or the right time and the right moment you're gonna have a repeat of the daniel incident and we don't need that okay but on the other hand lawrence has taken this interview in san francisco he has killed the interview and I think he got the job. He was he was offered the job. So it's like, is Issa going to follow him? Or are they just going to agree to like, this was a good time. This was a great time. Because remember, she is stepping into this newness, this um, like this growth and this like awakening. Who is that? Eckhart, Eckhart Tolle has that book about the awakening. She's stepping into this awakening of self and of purpose. And so... We're going to get to Molly in a minute, but just like she's able to say like, you know, I'm doing great. I did that. And she's able to make decisions for herself and and be accountable and be self, starting to be a lot more self-aware. Um, are we going to see next episode where she's like, you know, listen, Lawrence, this was great for my soul. I love this. I'll never forget you. But it's just it's just not meant to be. Are we gonna see that? Or is she gonna follow him to San Francisco? Or are they gonna do a long, I really don't think they're gonna do a long distance relationship. But I don't know, I don't know. Okay, so um, Issa and, and uh, I almost called her Yvonne. 
um, Molly. So they go back to um, Andrew and Nathan's initial spot after unpacking some boxes at Nathan's new spot. Molly and Andrew are there. They're having this conversation about, you know, her not wanting to hang out with the brother. Okay, and then these two come in. Okay, so it's awkward at first. They decide to stay and eat and, you know, um, Yvonne has ordered extra, Yvonne, Molly has ordered extra. So they're talking. Okay, so I'm like, oh, I forgot to say. Andrew, earlier, he asked, you know, Molly, why she can't meet Issa halfway? Now, I thought this was important because I was like, Andrew, I'm about to be sick of you if you don't point out to Molly that she has some wrongdoings here too. And even in that moment, Molly was like, like I didn't do nothing pretty much. Like the only person I'm worried about is, is, is looking for Latoya, that's it. But it's like she still acknowledged it in some way because she went to, she went on trying later on to try to, you know, meet Issa halfway. And it wasn't even half, it was like a quarter of the way. But even still, you can tell that if Andrew tells her something, she's ready to enact it quickly. But Issa, because of all that water under the bridge, she don't be trying to give her that same, you know, that same, you know, y'all know what I'm saying. All right, so they're sitting there and they are talking about guacamole and reflecting on this old apartment, talking about old times. And, you know, you can tell that Molly is resistant. She doesn't want it to fall back into this laughing banter and everything cool because she still wants to hold on to this issue. Now, on one hand, I feel her because don't be trying to be cool with me when we ain't talked about what's real. But then on the other hand, it's like, you ain't miss your friend just a little bit. Or enough to be like, okay, Issa, let's go talk outside real quick. Girl, let's take our drinks and let's go talk about this. Like, clearly there's still love there. You missed me. I missed you. It's okay to say I missed you. Let's go outside. Let's just rap about this. Because, you know, like, enough is enough. Even if you didn't want the friendship no more, you still could have been like, Let's go, because Issa's the one, Issa is not being stank, she's not being resistant, and she's, she's being like, you know, just normal. So yes, yeah, she's brushing over this topic, but she's not making it awkward. So clearly Yvonne, I'm, Molly, you need to have this talk, right? Okay, so she doesn't have this talk. Instead, what ends up happening is she accidentally texts Issa what she meant to text Andrew, this drunk text, saying, see, I'm trying with her. You know, Issa, in a very mature way, texts back and says, I don't think this text was meant for me, and leaves the room, goes outside. Okay, when they get outside and Issa's waiting on her lift, I'm like, this moment right here, it's so imperative. First of all, let me just say, it's imperative for us to understand, like I was saying earlier, every friend don't make it across through all the transitions, okay? Every friend don't. I'm not saying that Issa and Molly just have to stay friends no matter what through everything. Like I was telling y'all one week, some people are branches, leaves, roots, all of that, whatever, right? Um, I think the issue that I'm having is there's like some nuance, some nuances in these conversations. It's not just that Issa has grown and Molly's not feeling the, the new grown her, right? There's a lot of things that have occurred that Molly did not have context on. Issa getting back cool with Lawrence, she didn't really know what all that was about. The whole dealing with Kendola, she prejudged it and still didn't know what all that was about. She was jealous of the connection and, pre and judged that as well. So it's like she had all this hate and anguish and jealousy built up, attached that to, you know, Issa ignoring these boundaries and Issa only hitting her up to help out with this event that she did not ask about. And it's kind of like, okay, you've developed your view on the new Issa based on all of this other stuff. Does that make sense? Comment down below what y'all think about that. So, you know, for her to be like, ooh, I, ooh did, did I write down the exact thing she said? 
Okay, this conversation outside, Issa's basically saying, you know, I'm trying, I have, you know, initiated things, I called you to meet up, like, we're in there talking, like, you want, okay, you want to talk about the block party? Let's talk about the block party. And it's like, Molly says, I just don't think the person that you have become and the person that I have become, I no longer think that they vibe or mail or mesh together anymore. Okay, fine. So then Issa says, okay. And Molly's like, okay. So in that moment, I'm like, okay, what did you want her to say? Like, you obviously, and I can't, I can't stand when people do this. Like, you're saying something to get me to say something. You clearly want her to be the one to say, I'm sorry, and come on back, and you know, this is not how it should be. I need you, and blah, blah, blah. But Issa is, is becoming self-aware and finding her self-worth and realizing like, I didn't do nothing wrong. And, and if I did, I've taken the steps to at least open the door so that we can have the conversation, you know, in my time. Obviously, you know, I didn't do it for Thanksgiving, messed up there, but I had a lot going on. And I'm learning to clean up my mess. I'm learning to be honest. I'm learning to have the conversa the hard conversations. And so, you know, when I'm sitting here trying to talk to you, you as my friend, knowing that this is, you know, hard for me, you still choosing to tap into your ego and your pride and just not say when you're the one who blew up at the event. I'm just like, is she for real? So Issa clearly hurt because Molly says, you know, when you when you have made this new this new advancement in life and you've taken on this new venture and you finally figured out your purpose and then those people from before don't make that that hop with you, it is heartbreaking. It does hurt because it's like, dang, like I've learned something new about me and the one person that I want to tell about it, she ain't even feeling this new growth. Come on, new growth. She's not even feeling it. So it's kind of like, do I be okay with that? Do I change? Is, is that what Molly wanted for her to change and not be this new Issa? Did you want her to, you know, <laughs> Clearly she wanted her to appease her in the conversation because it's like, okay. You know, so I'm just like, Molly girl, you got one more episode to get me back on your side or else we gonna spend a whole year dragging Molly. Ooh, I just, ooh. Ooh, 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 ooh. So what do y'all think is gonna happen next week? for the season finale. Do y'all think Issa gonna end up messing with Nathan and messing it up with Lawrence again? Do y'all think that she's gonna move to San Francisco? Do y'all think Issa and Molly are gonna get back cool with just one episode? Is there gonna be a friend intervention? Is something gonna happen to Tiffany to bring them all together to make them eventually drop it? What like, I just don't know what could possibly happen in a week. I don't know. I don't know. I mean, technically, technically it's, it's more than a week. I don't know what could possibly happen in one episode, 30 minutes long. Is the season finale gonna be an hour? I highly doubt it. So I'm like, girl, I like, I love this episode. I did. I liked it a lot. It gave us a lot to talk about. It, it tapped into lots of social issues, lots of things that really go on between relationships and friendships and relationships are very, very close to friendships. Um, but yeah, comment down below what y'all think, what y'all thought. Do y'all agree, disagree? What's popping? Let, let's get into this conversation. I'm Kim Ray. This is Kim Ray Music TV and I'll see you guys next time. 